Hello, I'm Roger Bisbee from Skill Builder. I'm here today with Robin Clever, and Robin is going to give me a masterclass in roof construction. Hopefully you too, but the idea is if I can do it, anyone can do it. So Robin's gonna take us through the whole job. So just a quick intro to this job. It's a typical domestic extension. It's a wrap round extension. We've got a flat area on the top, which is gonna have a glass lantern. So we've got some flat roof joists to put in. We've got a series of rafters to go around. Um, it's a little bit tricky in places, but I'm gonna teach Roger a few tips and tricks about how to set the thing out easily. I've got my plan, but if anyone is in the business that I'm in, you get a plan one to 50, it's only indicative of what they want to end up with. When you actually get on site, you see the walls in and the steel working, you've pretty much got to work with what's there and make it work. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. Okay, so around the perimeter of the building, I've got a lean-to type roof. And I've got to make a lot of assumptions here and I've also got to calculate for different elements. For example, there's a warm roof going on here. So the level of our steel work here actually represents the top of the actual structural timbers. Then we've got a fur in piece going on there. Then we've got ply. After that, we've got 120 of PIR, which then has the membrane bonded directly to it. So what I need to do is I need to bring my rafter up get it to the right height to enable, when that PIR's in, we can put the trim around a nice hard edge, like a ridge, straight over the tiles. So the first thing I need to do, although we specified what angle to have these, is just simply check these, simple thing. Section of timber, straight on the top, and then we're just gonna mark a line. My level's a bit long, but it's perfect. I'm gonna line them up, and we're just gonna take a line here. All right, and that goes down to the bench with me. I'm gonna use my roofing square to check the pitch and I'll set everything from that. The other thing I need to do is measure it up. Now, normally I use a simple calculation, which is basically the run, which is the level run, by the degree of pitch or actually the diagonal measurement for that particular de degree of pitch. So what I'm gonna do here is called stepping off. So I've made a little drawing for myself and I've done all the dims on it. So I've used the level to check back the distance from the front edge of this steel to the outside edge of my plate. I've done the same from the top to there. And now I'm gonna use my roofing square on the stepping off method, which is simple, because there's measurements up either side. And I'm gonna step that off up my rafter and that'll give me exactly what I'm looking for. And I'm gonna go and do that now. And Roger is gonna drill some holes for me. Let's work out the pitch. Take my roof in square. This was a level line, so effectively, that is the rafter slope that I'm working to. It wants to be 35 degrees. That's what we asked the steel worker for, and basically that's what we need for a plain tile. So on my roof in square, I line this up with my common rafter run, pop it along there, and I've clearly got 35 degrees. So I'm gonna set my roofing square up. I use this special modifi modified section of uh, Iroco, which I made, it's like a fence. And although I'm not gonna go exactly into how this roofing square operates, it's basically like a protractor. And if you can imagine the center of the protractor being a fixed point here in this case, and then all of these angles go round in a semicircle. That's effectively how it works. So that's the center of the protractor. That's 35 degrees. That's level. And that's plumb. So that's a plumb cut. And that's a seat cut. So what I've got is a little dimension of the drawing here. I'm using a 150 rafter. And the reason I'm using a 150 rafter, it's only a short span, is purely to accommodate enough PIR insulation, maintaining an airspace over the top, and that gives me basically what I'm looking for in terms of the um, build up for insulation purposes. So with a rafter, we have a bird's mouth that sits over the plate. In tradition, that's always a third of the thickness of the timber. So in my case, I'm using a 150 rafter, so it's 100 millimeters from the top of the rafter back to the corner of the bird's mouth. I've also worked out the level of the soffit in relation to the heads of the window frames and door frames, simply by putting a spirit level on the wall plate, measuring down and making an allowance for the thickness of the soffit board. So in my case, my drop is 275 millimeters. 
The overhang, I cut that off afterwards. But I always cut my seat cut first because it's really awkward to try and get a saw in afterwards level. That's my seat cut right on the end of the timber. I've selected a fairly straight piece for this because it's effectively my template. I'm going to repeat these cuts over and over again. The next step is to measure up my um, drop, which is 275 millimetres. So when I run the set, a square here, on this scale, I've got millimetres. I can come to 200. I can mark a simple line through, go back, and I can add 75 millimetres onto that which is 75 here. That is the level of my bird's mouth. Here we go. Now we know we want two thirds of the rafter. In our case, it's 150. Simple mathematics, it's 100 mil. That's two thirds, there we go. So then we use the square, we slide it down the top edge of the timber and we mark the bird's mouth. So there's your bird's mouth. That effectively sits over your wall plate, all right? I'm gonna mark the top of the rafter now, and the way I'm gonna do that is by stepping off. The height from my wall plate to the top of my steel is 715 millimeters. And I'm gonna step it off again using, it's very simple, 200 mil every time. There's my 200, bang. I'm gonna mark that, 200. I'm gonna go again, 200. I'm gonna mark that, there we go again, 200. So we are now, at 600, yes, two, four, six. I'm looking for 715, add another 100, 115, excuse my poor English. That is the level of my steel, so I'm gonna write on there, level of steel. So why didn't you just get a tape measure, Robin? Because, Roger, I'm measuring up an angle yeah. at 90 degrees, so if you can imagine, you can't measure this way, because that's the wrong measurement. I'm actually looking for the measurement up that way, 700, and 15. Oh, I see, yeah, yeah. Yeah? So yeah. this is called stepping off. It's a Chinese thing, is it? Yeah. I also know that in my case, I've got a steel here like this. I've got a rafter which actually passes it. And on top of that steel, I'm going to sit a ridge, okay? Now that ridge accommodates the roof insulation, which is 120, the plywood, which is roughly 20, and the end of the furring, which is about 10. So when you add all that together, it actually comes up to, or I actually worked it to, the height of this timber, which is the same as the rafter. So it's effectively my ridge. So what I need to do then on my stepping off, I know that's the level of the top of the steel, but I'm actually gonna add on a ridge. So I can use the ridge I'm gonna use, pop a mark there. Now I know that's the very top of my rafter. So my final seat cut here, on the top is here. That is the top of my ridge. Now the next thing I know is I need to position that ridge and it's exactly the same method, stepping off. However, the distance in to the steel is 1,105 millimeters. That's from the outside of the wall plate to the outside of the steel. So I'm gonna step that off again and it's gonna be somewhere near it. This time we step it off using the different scale, the, the scale on the other side. When you say somewhere near it, I've never heard you use that phrase before. Well, the reason I say somewhere near it is because I've actually, the steelwork was set out for this roof, so I know it's going to be roughly in the field because I oversaw the setting out of the steelwork. I did the steel drawings, I signed the steel drawings off on this job mm. purely because I know I needed to pitch a roof on it afterwards. So this time I'm going to just use the 300 scale. So there's 300. There's 600, there's 900. Now we need to add the odd bit on, which is 215, there. That is effectively my ridge board. So what that, what that means is then, the corner of the steel, where I we talked about that, the level of the top of the steel, and that's the front. That's exactly where my steel is. So on the roof, that's where the steel is. And you can see it's perfectly positioned for me to land a nice piece of ridge on top of the steel. And that's my oh, rafter. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then what we're gonna do, when you- say ridge, it is a ridge. It's a ridge board, it? yeah. I was thinking it was a plate when I was- Yeah, it's okay. actually a ridge board, which we're gonna yeah. then bottom fix yeah. through the top flange of the steel. You're gonna draw that's the holes for that. 
yep. and then we're going to bolt that up there but we'll build all the roof on first because the steels are never that parallel they're always a few mil out and this way it also eliminates i know the steels are level and the plates are level and this way this will land on the steel and it will just run in and out and then we'll bolt it up afterwards so we'll attach all the roof together you know, one of the things i think the real skill in this for me the experience that's yeah. what it needs it needs experience because you've got a little bit of discrepancy in the timber yeah it's a little bit okay so you're turning all those, those rounds so they're all the same way around but i noticed when you put that square on there yeah that there was a bit of daylight between between there yeah and there yeah and then you're telling me that even the stills aren't completely uniform and there's a yeah so all those millimeters this is what gets me is all those millimeters yeah add up yeah you know and, and by the time you finish it if you lost three there you lost four and then suddenly i'm looking at a gap that you could drive a yeah. bus through you know so that's, yeah that's where you you kind of really score because you've done it before yeah so many times you just ah. so you've got to build a bit of tolerance in and sometimes if a chip if you're a chippy and you've done roofs before sometimes you know you get there the plates have been bedded on nice and level but they're not true and they're not straight so sometimes you do have to then knock the plates back Backwards and forwards and secure them maybe with a thunderbolt type bolt which you can just put a nice drill through and screw them down or even if it's a soft block you can actually shoot your nails into them although it's not advised by the nail gun manufacturers that you shoot into any kind of masonry but you can throw into a soft block and that'll just secure them and hold oh, yeah, them. I do it all day long. Do you? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I know. And everyone else does too. So uh, those medium density yeah. blocks they take a fixing like that. So I'm gonna cut this up and I'm gonna make a template now the front steel and the side steel are different by 100 mil, so the rear steel is too far back. So when I do the rear section of rafters, I've got to add another 100 mil on, onto my plumb cut. And what that looks like, sorry, Roger, is simply measuring another 100 mil. So the rafter on the front is going to be exactly the same, except the position of the ridge is going to be here so that's my that's my side steel and that's my front steel oh, okay. that's going to be the ridge there yeah so so that pitch robin yeah all the way round is it is it the same all same pitch 35 degrees all the way around yep I've got to think about that yeah it's the same oh, pitch you're telling me it's longer all it is is yeah, yeah okay so same height same plates yeah. the same height tops the same height yeah plates the same height top and the pitch the is the same height, height pitch so is the same it's a bit longer it's just the fact that if you can imagine if that's my steel and that's my plate the one on the back is just a bit further in i think they just okay. could have calculated that a little bit better on the setting out the steel people but at least it's not the wrong way no, at no, least no, it's no, not, not too far forward fine. yeah and it's fine i can still work yeah. it and that's all good okay. um so that's it the next job cut these rafters up get it all ready and then we'll start putting the thing together all right roger i better get on with my yeah you better go on with the drilling the drill's down there the bits in it that is effectively our rafter. This is sort of indicating the wall plate. This is an oversized rafter structurally for what we're doing. Yeah. Look at the span, it's nothing. Mm. The reason we're doing this is because you're gonna have PIR here. 100 millimeters of insulation there. Yeah. An airflow, in fact, it's underneath an airflow over the top, yeah? So on the warm side, you've got the insulation, and then you've got airflow over the top, breathable membrane or a vented fascia board. Don't go vented. Counter bat all day long. You could do. I love, right. I love counter I've got a couple of rafters. You're drilling my holes. Let's get on with it. Because there's a series of marks on this plate which represent rafters, window openings. Instead of trying to sort of measure everything up and then re-measure it up, I measure it once, mark it out really accurately, cut myself this rod, mark it up. When I put my ridge on, I just transfer the rod up to square everything down. This eliminates all of those sort of like measurement mistakes because it's really easy to gain a few millimetres here and there. Mm. 
Max has bits look good, doesn't it? I'm just using my rod. I'm making my life easy. Yeah, well, this is just, this is a fail safe. I haven't got to do any measuring once I've done it once. So the next job is I'm going to square this up so I've got my N2 rafters in, I've got my ridge onto my plate as well. I'm going to take a diagonal measurement between the two and I'm going to tap them backwards and forwards until they're perfect. The reason I'm doing that is because we've got some roof lights going in here. They're quite small apertures. There's one that's they're 600 by 800. It's a standard size roof window. But by doing that, when I actually trim them out and frame them up, I know they're going to fit square as well. So it's really important that you start square and, excuse that, finish square <laughs> too. <laughs> now that has got a difference of 15 mil. So I've measured my two long diagonals. I'm going to make them exactly the same now. Then I know that I'm exactly 90 degrees to my wall and my roof lanterns will fit a treat. Robin? Yes, uh, Roger. Don't forget, as your apprentice, yes, Roger. there's supposed to be an element of learning in this, not just cheap labour, not just drill the holes. I mean, I've drilled holes before. Quite honestly, I've got to say, in my career, drill quite a few holes, yeah? Well, you should so, be good at it then. Get, get on and do it. Stop so talking am, about it. When am I going to move on to pastures new? When, well, when in a minute, I might even let you nail some nails in, Roger. Oh, God, really? How about that? What, with your s wing? With my swing core, look at that. The sun's really strong today, it's lovely. Tell you what, mate, while you're there. Yep. Done with the... Uh... Oh, man, that was lovely. That was lovely. That was that was such Good a... stuff, yeah? I, I actually got to say, I enjoyed my drilling today. Good. Well, you took your time over it, so <laughs> you must have loved it. <laughs> oh, Dave, you're the man. You're the man when it comes to coffee. You're the man when it comes to bricklaying. What else you got hidden up your sleeve? Onto there, onto there. Parallel? No, no, no. Oh, you want me to go around there? Yeah. Mind my coffee, won't you? Because I don't want to spill. Come on, Roger. It's coffee. Coffee, mm. Robin. Bloody, you can tell he's a plumber, can't you? It's all gangly. So I'm happy with that position there, Roger. So I'm going to put a mark somewhere. And then we're going to bolt that ridge in. But before we bolt that ridge in, we're going to straighten it up by putting the rafter in the middle. And then it'll be nice and true yeah. then. So we've got the plate nice and true. So that's what we're going to do next. There's a little bit of a bow in that, a little bit... Uh, in the ridge. Yeah, mate. Yeah, so it's fixed at either end, and obviously the timbers are always a bit waney. But as soon as you put in a few more of the rafters, providing your plate's nice and straight, which it is in this case, we just check it out. We just give it a little tap, ah. bring everything flush. Look at that. And there you go. You should have a nice straight ridge now. And then we'll fire that in. There we go. Nice and true. There we go. What's that, mate? Dive bombing tape. I'll go get it. I'd like to volunteer to be the one who goes down and gets the tape, Mr. Menemy. Go on then. This piece of timber, not only was it that way, just at the end there. Yeah, it needs to be bolted through that. Flies steel. up. Yeah, so it needs to be. We so the bolt to... brings it down then? Yeah, we, we'll. So should we bolt it first before we fix Well, we need to probably drill another hole under here to catch the end, to get that to get that pulled down. Okay, mate, I'll do that. Maybe you can do that off the yeah, scaffold, yeah. drill up through, and then we'll put a bolt through it. That'd be okay. nice. say am I happy? Yeah. Did you say that? I did. I'd love you to be happy Roger. That's a deep question. Yeah. This is a this is a real uh, no no doing this isn't it? Mm. So I've seen someone seen me do this at a kitten as well. Well it depends what moves doesn't it? Back in the day when people used to smoke this believe it or not was the measure of all things. They used to say you can't get a fag paper between that. So let's just have a little look. Give it the Rizzler test. Yeah. Yeah, I think 
think he's he's all right. He's all right. The boy done good. I say this is often a problem where you have a steel on a plate and a rafter that hits it. So what I like to do is just mark it, drill a hole, couple of cuts. Instead of taking another bird's mouth out of it, just think it looks a bit special then. When you're working with tantalized timber, so structural, I always use a galvanized nail, 3.1 by 90. 90 millimeters being the length, 3.1 being the thickness. And they're adequate for roof construction. You don't want anything shorter than that. It's got to be strong. Got a few lumps and bumps into it. There you go, look at that. What a service. Now you're quite sure I'm not just cheap over. Yeah. That's it, it's fine. That's it. Absolutely fine. This is my uh, schoolboy error, because um, funnily enough, I'm human. So I um, put my uh, window trimmer in the wrong place. I've got to take it out. And anyone who knows how well these nails hold, so I've got to get the thing out and, re and redo it. It won't take me long. I actually need to cut the nails out in situ. So um, I'm going to try and give it a little knock and make a little bit of a gap in the top. So you can see how hot how solid it is. There we go. That's giving us a bit of air space. Now we need to cut that nail out. First of all, in the top, let's run this saw blade down between there and there. That's the first one done. I've got another couple to do. You all right, Robin? Do you yeah. need me to do it from here? Well, let me try and get into a better position. Ooh, there he goes, there we go. Oh, that's lovely. Perfect, so that's released that. Loose as a goose, give me the saw. There you go, come from around the back. Yeah, that's what they all say. We're gonna shift this over. There we go, let's denail that. It's very often, it's very rare I get to use my hammer anymore, it's all. Now I'm gonna put that back in the quick way. Yeah. That's the way it is in life. It is. So I've just got the window trimmer there to set the width for that. That's the crucial bit. I'll use the same up there. There we go. Lovely job. This one's not fixed either. Schoolboy era, boys. What's next? I need you to make some bridging or some noggings, okay? Oh, they need to be 350 free, every yeah. single one. And so yeah. that means when I put that in between two joists, yeah, you got because these are 47. Centers. Bang on for 400, all right? That's it, yeah. So you've got a template, or you can set something up, you can clamp a bit of timber to there, yeah. and you can button them I against. Don't, I don't know. Yeah? I've done a mile. Can you make me, to start with, I'd say 12, because there's a few that we need to make a different size as well. Okay, so a dozen of those, my friend. A dozen of those. Got the end stop there so that it can't go back too far. That's it. He wants 12 of those. Never used this saw before, but I'll tell you what I really like is if you have to hold the timber on that side and you want to use it left handed, you don't have to worry about pressing in because this 
bit of your hand can go in there. So normally you use it with your thumb on the safety there. So if you want to be holding the bit of timber and you want to use it left-handed, what you can do there is you can still operate that safety. On there, which is really good because a lot of the time, you, the way they've designed that switch has allowed you to heal it in. So, full marks for that. So I've got some small roof lights going in this slope. So I've spaced the initial rafters out to the width of the aperture. There's gonna have another one on either side to form a double. Um, I mean, really, it's plenty strong enough to do the job like without that, doubles on these, but I like them to catch the battens all the way up the side as well, so they're outside of the flashings, etc. So what I've got is parallel trimmers, which slot in between. I've got a top one. And in this case, a bottom one, which is beveled off, because it actually sits over the plate, all right, over there. Now to put these in, I've got my, my foot already cut, and I've got my top already cut. So what I did, I took my rafter, I marked the window on it, and then I cut a top and a bottom off. Now that's what I'm gonna use to put them in, so it's simple. I offer the top in, Mark the shoulder, same for the bottom. Put the bottom in, mark the shoulder. So then all I've got to do is take my, and I've repeated that process on the other side, take my trimmer, I'm gonna fix, I'm gonna fix that home. And it's basically all worked out for me. So we're gonna get that fixed home there. Let's turn the gun on, it's turned itself off, which is always good. That's good, saves the battery if you turn it off. Put the other side in. Then we're gonna put the foot in. Now, the foot is simply in the middle there. You can see how nicely it fits. Because there's no, if you try and measure all this stuff, there's too many bits to go wrong. We'll put, that, we'll put that foot right in the middle there. There we go. So we'll get a fixing round into the plate. Down into the top. And then to get the top in, exactly the same deal. Mark the shoulders. Get your trimmer. Incidentally, I cut all the trimmers exactly the same. My shoulder marks there. It's got a nice feature on this particular gun. Check this. I like this feature, especially for doing decking, you know, putting a roof deck down, how about that? It's so quick. There we have it. No, 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 inside, that's the aperture, yeah. All right, hold it there for a minute. All right. Now, Roger, you're gonna pass me, we'll just leave that just to one side, come over here, I'll put it onto there. Keep yours coming on your roof there. That's it, mate, I'll leave that to there for now. We're gonna get a um, battery drill and a couple of those bolts off the back. You know, the short 1260 from the inside. That's it, right, so the same again there. So you're gonna cut those quickly, all right? Be back in a second. You like that? Yeah, I do. It's safe. And these tend not to split the timber because they've got a nice, they're not countersunk at all. So anyway, so then we just drop this in now. 
perfectly in between there and there. And we've, we get all that attached up to itself. We'll bolt that together. So you see a lot of timber has cup, cupping in it. It's just like that. So obviously I've got more timbers coming this way. So I'm gonna run my cup towards those timbers. So it's a bit more, a bit more straight. Cup to cup or do you spoon them all in? Um, I, on the inside I'll back it up with the cup as well so it's nice and tight, but I won't run the inside one round until I've got these ones in and end fixed before I do the hanging. So I'm just going to attach these up here and then we're going to square it all up. Roger, can I have some more bolts out of that little box down there, mate? Please, the uh, cardboard box behind my favourite tool in the world, the roofing square. What's your favourite tool in the world? Um, it's got to be my roofing square, really, because it's simple, but it's been with me ever since I left college and that before. That same one? That same one. Yeah, wear them out, really, generally. No, but I, I sort of consider that to be kind of like my, um, well, it's all my qualifications all rolled into one, really, and it's where I kind of, it was the thing I enjoy best is making roofs, complex timber structures, but you can use it for a whole load of things as well. Mm. But equally, a a small, small calm to square, square, speed square. These are really good as well. Use they're, these. they're actually, I'll tell you what, if we did a video one day on yeah. how to use it, it's a complicated bit of kit. That yeah, I mean, it's, of, yeah, it works in the same principle, tricks. except um, the protractor is from the pivot point there. There's your degrees of pitch. Yeah. So it's a protractor like that. Yeah, my one, it's got little notches in it. Yeah, which is good for doing parallel scribes. Yeah, yeah, but there's all sorts of little things. There's about half a dozen clever little things you tricks. can do with it. There are, so yeah. One day, and this is the best thing. You know what this one's for? This one? I did know, actually. That's for hanging on the shelf in the shop. Oh, that's lovely. No. It is. You know what comes next? Squaring it up. Batten across the top, and then we can build everything off it then. This looks pretty straight. But beautiful. Right, Dave, I need your help here. Yep. You're gonna hold the tape measure, your one, into there. I'm going to go and measure it over to there. In fact, what I'll do is I'll go back onto the other tower and we'll do it from there and then we'll get a brace across the top, which is Roger's going to get me a piece of batten. Okay, so what I want you to do, Dave, yep. is we need to increase this length and decrease that length. So how we do that is we just knock. So if you go to the end, you're just going to tap the joists over. Yeah, so you're going to go that way, say, five mil in the steel. That's it, let's try that again because this is to be exactly the same measurement and we cannot go wrong then. So this is the opening for the... This is the lantern, lantern opening, yeah. yeah lantern, Two, five, and again on that side. I'm just going to straighten it up. Check it for straight. I really thought you would have come unstuck there. Yeah? Not me, mate. I've worked it out. Go on. I spent my life working things out. <laughs> go on. I need some um, six by two, three bits. Yeah. Well, what are they, noggins or what? They just need to be like 300 long. They're just a space to steal off. We're going to whack that one back, fire it in, spread these out, nog them out, and then go boom. What's that? That's busy. That's my window trimmer. 300, Robin. Please, Roger. That that is when you said take three out of that, I thought you meant just cut it to three. No. I don't know what you want. I won't have enough timber now, will I? Helps me to know. When I said cut free at 300, I didn't mean cut free at any size you want. All right. We've created this large aperture. It's two meters by one and a half meters. It's going to take a roof lantern. And so what you, what you saw us do was parallel everything up, all on the measure. And then we used an equal measurement across the diagonals to get it exactly square. And so then I always like to pick up a site square as well and use that just to double check we're all in good form. Oh, it's absolutely spot on. It's absolutely spot on. If, if the lantern doesn't fit, they've made it wrong. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. Good. All right, let's rattle these last joists in, space them all out, get the solid noggins in everywhere, trim everything up, and that's this ready for furring pieces and decking. One, two, three, four. I'm gonna put the first one in that steel there. So he went from saying roughly 300 to exactly. To, be, to don't be a clown. I'm gonna slide that one, didn't I? There you go, mate. Is he calling you a clown? Is that what's happening? Yeah. 
Well, yeah, we need yeah, to actually get up into there, the really. The but we clown need to put something underneath yeah. them to hold them up, don't we? Got a little bit of fat on something. They need to be yeah. just spaced up enough. Yeah. 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 Just spaced up enough, don't they? Just so they don't rot. That's it. What is it today, Robin? It's Valentine's Day. What are you doing tonight, Robin? If it's not whatever I'm told, if Roger. Not, if it's not a rude question, you are actually going home tonight. Then. Yeah, I'm doing whatever I'm told because I figured in life that's always a good, good move. But only when it comes to winning. I'm hitting my. Flange, I'm hitting my bracket, Dave. <laughs> I've got something in the way here, which is going to be tricky, isn't it? You should have allowed me to cut that a bit shorter. No, it's not. No, it's not you. You did a fine job, Roger. <laughs> it's the other clowns, and it's the one we squeezed in last, isn't it? So, all right, we'll come back to that one. Roger can give me some more nails. What do you want, mate? Nails. Yeah, give us three or four reams, please, mate. That's because it's under the batten, Dave, and the timber's on the batten here, so it's a bit tight. It's all right. Any time today. <laughs> OK, yeah, oh, yeah. And then you can have that on there. There you go. One will have a slightly shorter notch now, I would say. Deal in the way. <laughs> yeah. Okay, tell me when. To you, to me, to him, to her. Stay there for a minute while I reposition myself. You're going to go and tie at your end. I'll go under my baton over here. That's it. Joists. Yeah, I worked it all out. Tight your side first, Dave, on that. That's it, mate. All right. Yep. Somewhere there. Ready? Yep. Whoa. Put that one over there. Which way? Which way are you going? Just go over to there for a minute. Let's get the last one in. Yep. All right, there you go, mate. Give us a couple of nails in there. OK, Robin, I think it's time to go. It's getting dark and the, and the cameraman's getting grumpy. Ah, uh, how about that, eh? Yeah. Well, he's been uh, busy all day watching you work, watching yeah, you do uh, yeah. timber work. How have you found it? I'd, I'd love it. Yeah, it's been good, actually. Yeah? yeah. I think if I had a choice between being a carpenter and a cameraman, I'd be a cameraman. Would you? Yeah. Oh, OK, that's fair enough. That's a bit disappointing. I mean, one day with me and he wants to leave. <laughs> anyway, it's been good. Yeah, thanks, mate. And uh, you're going to come back again yeah, and do a absolutely. few more... Roofs yeah. for us and we a few are. more other things. Yeah, yeah, we've got some interesting roofs coming up this year. So Excellent. as and when, we'll call right. you up, get you down and... Um... Yeah. And if you're not a subscriber, become a subscriber because that way you can keep up to date with everything that Robin's doing. Have a look at his own channel as well because that's coming on nicely, isn't it? Yeah, just do sort of bits of fill-in bits between what I do with that. Roger. You keep saying that. It's all good stuff. Is it? Yeah. Oh, it must be good if you think so. So yeah. thanks, mate. Okay, mate. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.